In business, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has said the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic have presented an unprecedented opportunity for Nigeria to reset critical sectors of its economy. Oshibajo spoke yesterday during a virtual media conference where the Global Citizen, a global movement for citizen-led actions to eradicate poverty and improve human living conditions, announced a collaboration with the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority, NSIE, to establish Nigeria's Solidarity Support Fund. The media conference also had in attendance the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, Chairman of the Board, NS NSIA, Jide Zaitlin, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, uh, Uche Oji, Chairman Global Citizen Nigeria. According to the organizers, the initiative aims to mobilize Nigerians at home and in the diaspora, as well as global partners in the philanthropic and private sectors to support the country's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. And joining us live is Loretta Anyagolu, who is a political analyst to take a look at these matters. Good morning, Loretta. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm lovely. I'm Great. doing very well. Thank no. you. All right. In your <clears> article, <throat> Loretta, you seem to cry foul as concerns the global players. What is it we are missing and why do you seem to be a voice crying in the wilderness, so to speak? Well, I, I am, I'm actually, first of all, to a bit of a correction, I am an economist, I'm not a political analyst. I apologize but of course, for that. A, that's okay, economics and politics are, you know, one and the same. You can't have one without the other. However, the reason why I was, when, in an article I wrote, I'm sure that's what you're referring to, um, just about a week ago um, for The Nation, I was talking about the opportunity to research Nigeria, um, Nigeria's economy, and the way we do things to transform it. I was speaking that way because if you see capitalist nations like the United States, that is the best reference for a capitalist nation, paying out trillions of US dollars to citizens, you suddenly wonder, is this capitalism? If an African country was doing that to its own economy, everybody will run out to cry foul, the IMF will scream, the World Bank, and of course our own economies, indigenous economies, will join the bandwagon in saying, oh, you don't do that, that's not proper economic uh, theory. This is the second time America is going out of its way to do something that is totally out of the capitalist uh, arrangement. Um, the, I remember when Obama came in, in the 80s, uh, he bailed out the, um, the auto industry. And everybody was screaming that you don't do that. Uh, it's the economy is going to collapse if, if the auto industry is not doing well. You should let them fold up. But he did bring up the money and he did bail out the industry and save thousands of jobs. And that was the beginning of the recovery of the US economy. So basically what I was saying was that time has come for us in Africa in particular, as the leader of all the African nations, to wake up and begin to devise and develop theories that work for us. Mm -hmm. Look at economic theories and use and apply those ones that work for you, that are the best, is in the best interest of your citizens, not about what anybody else will say. When your citizens are okay, when your economy is going well, you'd be surprised that whatever it is that you invented, this new economic theory you've added to the new body of economic theories will be studied all over the world as a new, no, uh, you know, the new normal. And that's basically what I was trying to say. Loretta, help us put it in perspective, you know, in, in our own context. How do we reset the skills to favor us at this time, seeing that, you know, this rebalancing has eluded us, even in less turbulent times? Yes. Well, first of all, you know, this government has a tremendous opportunity to rewrite history, the history of Nigeria. Sometimes the government is given an opportunity by the Almighty to make a huge difference. And this pandemic is giving this government an opportunity to do things differently and transform the economy. First of all, they've started well by um, removing subsidies, which have become an albatross for the economy. Now, again, we um, have the opportunity to build internally the, the internal mechanisms of, our, for instance, you can't build a nation when there's so much disunity. This is an opportunity for us to band together, for them to build 
a national ethos. For them to define who a Nigerian would be, to get all Nigerians together, to believe in a Nigeria, to make Nigerians proud of being Nigerians, and for every Nigerian to begin to ask the question, what contribution can I make? To unify this country so that we don't define ourselves in the context of religion or ethnicity. That's one. Because you can't do, you can't develop a nation without unity. That's 180 million people is 180 million brains. And out of them, you have several geniuses. Mm -hmm. And you can't be, you can't find those geniuses unless you work together. Right. Now, I give an example of when I talk about resetting the economy. If you look at the way we budget, the amount of infrastructure that Nigeria needs today is enormous. We're talking trillions of US dollars. Where will Nigeria find this money if we depend only on oil? But what can we do? Immediately, we can change the way we budget, remove and stop borrowing against infrastructure that can't bring in income. Remove all the, the um, borrowing. It's very radical what I'm talking about. It'll be very difficult for most you know, governments to do, but this is this cap on, remove most borrowing out of the, of the federal government, move it to our development banks, which means Development Bank of Nigeria, um, Bank of Industry, uh, CBN, let them manage those um, borrowings. So when you borrow, you apply it directly to an infrastructure project, say Kano Kaduna Road, that is a, is a, is a heavily used highway, um, concession it to a big company, not to a friend or to, to relatives, Hmm. But big companies across the world who are doing these concessions around, concession it to them, they will build four eight-lane highways, do restaurants across. Can you imagine if simultaneously the Kaduna Road is done, the Enugu Onita Road is being done, the um, Lagos uh, Benin is being done all at the same time, the number of jobs they're going to create, how it's going to boost the GDP of this country, that is a gross domestic product. Now, it's an opportunity for us to fund we take the money that we have, whatever little we're not earning from oil, we apply it to education, which is the future of country, research and development, health and security, because these are fundamental to the growth of any nation. Now, if you did that, what happens is, I give an example, this young lady just two months ago from the University of Nigeria that developed with herbs um, the, the experiment that she carried out in her research, PhD research, was able to reverse uh, cancer in mice. Now, of course, she's in Nigeria. No support will come out of that. Her professors, everything is impressed. She writes professional bodies presenting her case to the U.S. Uh, science body, to the uh, European science body. They were so thrilled after examining what she did. They called her into to Portugal in February to give her an award. They've also called her into the United States to give her an award. If it wasn't for the um, pandemic, she would have been in San Francisco being honored. Now, I can assure you that in a very short time, one of these governments or institutions are going to give her a major grant, drag her out of Nigeria, put her somewhere else, um, you know, perfect this research, end up making it into a drug and bringing it back to sell it to us you know, for millions. Hmm. But when we have our private sector people make, making donations now for COVID and so on, this is an opportunity for them to fund projects like this. Look into universities. I tell you, a lot of universities All have right. break, you know, groundbreaking research like this. All right, no Loretta, so Loretta, good. lastly, uh, does our financial credibility not have much to do with our leaders, you know, and their lack of credi credibility? For instance, we take a look at the Abacha loot and, you know, the patronizing conditions levied against our leadership, which, you know, was also accepted. Well, I have to be clear. I mean, I think there's something about us. We Nigerians, we criticize ourselves more than anybody else. The issue of corruption is something that is all over the world. However, I think we, in Africa, is, a, is more prominent. Why? Because we're at this level of development. We haven't really achieved much. Um, how, I don't think anybody analyzes Nigeria just in the context of corruption. Nigeria is, is looked at as a wealthy country, not because of oil alone, because of so many other options and opportunities that we have that we're not exploiting. We have gas, we have minerals, we have water. Now, I tell you, water is probably going to be, as, as we are fighting an invisible war now with the pandemic, in the future, water is going to be another um, source of war in this world. 
Nigeria is an abundance of it. Are we utilizing all of the opportunities? Are we using our income from oil to, to um, revive all other parts of where we can earn an income? We're not doing that. So if we spend our time just talking about corruption and not finding ways of avoiding corruption, for instance, a civil servant works for 35 years. He retires without, without being able to buy a house. That means that our system, if the, the structure of the welfare and the, and the, uh, the uh, support to, to uh, workers has to be examined. Well, how do you discourage this person to be corrupt? If after 35 years, when he's weak and tired, cannot work anymore, he can't even, he doesn't own a home. Mm -hmm. By that time, he should own a home. He should have finished his mortgage. That house should be free and right. for him to relax. And whatever you pay him as pension will be sufficient to feed himself. Loretta, unfortunately, that's where we're going to wrap it. Thank you so very much, Ignomis Loretta Niagolo, for your time. And do keep safe there. Thank you very much, you too. Have a lovely day. Thank you.